Hello there. Welcome to another episode on Maggie. Today I'm going to be talking to you about power on Maggie and how on earth do I power a 1920s boat. Behind me is Maggie's 1960s Armstrong Sidley two-cylinder engine and she is a powerhouse. I use my engine to charge my batteries. I have three batteries and this boat runs on diesel. Day to day, if you're a continuous cruiser, you'll be wanting to charge your batteries on a daily basis. The rule is to charge it between 8 a.m. in the morning and 8 p.m. at night. With my setup on Maggie, I charge her for about anything between 30 minutes and an hour per day to make sure my batteries are topped up and healthy. This also enables me to use plug power via switching on the inverter. Now I'm not sure what other setup boats have, but I can only use power via plug sockets once I switch on my inverter. This can have a massive drain on the battery and it's not something that I like to do too often. So I look at alternative ways on powering my daily electronics. You're gonna see me switch on now. Oh, cold hands. Come on, Max. At the moment I rely on battery power on Maggie. Unfortunately at the moment they are half damaged due to changing a fan belt and leaving them to go dead for a few days because I couldn't change a fan belt. But all is well. To combat this I have my fridge switched off and I rarely run my inverter. What do I usually need to power? Living and working on Maggie means that I need access to my laptop most of the time. I very rarely use any plug power on the boat. To use plug power I have to switch on the inverter. This does unfortunately drain the batteries quite quickly, meaning I have to then switch on the engine to recharge the batteries. Until I can afford lovely solar panels and lithium batteries, that is a dream, I rely on something else to power my laptop. There is it. The people at Power Oak gave me this lovely blue tea power box. It is a portable battery that you charge up via solar power or you can plug it in to where you can plug it in. I usually only plug this in when I'm charging my engine and I've been doing that pretty much every day. It usually gets the juice up to about 25% each time and it does the job. Now I've had this for the past few months, I've had it since August. And the lovely people at Power Oak asked me to give an honest review on this little bad boy and I don't like to do something straight away, I want to see how it's gonna you know sink into my day-to-day -day life and I will say I wouldn't have been able to edit any videos or power anything or charge my phones without this bad boy. I want to be honest with you, it's absolutely up to you whether you look into this. Me and myself, it's been completely reliable. It's been absolutely completely reliable. I charge my camera on this, I charge my phones on this and I charge my laptop. My laptop is an absolute energy guzzler. It's five years old now and this has always been able to give it power. Power Oak also gave me a solar panel to use with this. All I do is I pop it on the roof, I plug in the solar panel, and then when I come back to my boat when the sun's down, I bring it back inside and I use it like that. And it's, it's pretty effective. 
It also has a cigarette lighter charge so you can plug it into your car. So if you're going to and fro, whatever, shopping, go and see your mates down south or whatever, just plug it in and your car will charge it. In terms of design, I like it because it's blue. Also has a wireless charging output here, 15 watts. And I like that the top is flat so I can pop stuff on it and it's out of the way. It's really easy to store away. It's never really been in my way. And it's pretty useful for me to take wherever I go. If I decide to go on a camping trip, if I decide to go down south anywhere or north, any location, Elizabeth, I know that I can take this with me and I have guaranteed power wherever I go. It's worth looking into if you're interested. I'm gonna drop a link below so you can see more for yourself. So one of the things I do is I get my blue tea box, my power bank, my power out, thank you very much. And I pop it up here. And you can see how much I use it because it's covered in bloody leaves. It's there's four panels in there, so it's pretty powerful. And I'll probably say it's really effective for charging quickly too. Right, that's plugged into charge. And I'm gonna leave it and then come back to it tomorrow. Oh, hi there. I'm trying to save gas as price has been rising. So I've been mostly cooking above my stove. I've got my veggies below and some chicken. And then I'm boiling some pasta at the top. And I just crack on. Obviously it's slower than it would just on the hub. but. This has cost me nothing apart from the coal that I've been putting into the fire. I can get a bag of 10 kilos of coal for eight pounds. Unfortunately, it only lasts me three days. The wood is sourced from my lovely dad and my brother-in-law and my dad chops it up for me. So I'm very lucky I've got someone to do that and help. Yeah, let's see what we got. To also keep warm, I've got a hot water bottle strapped around my waist as it is incredibly cold right now and heating up this boat 70 foot is no small feat. So this fire is going consistently all day, every day, else I don't think this place would be very habitable. got chicken, onions, some pepperoni and some courgette in here with some butter, milk, water and a stock cube. I'm very excited to put this in with my pasta. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Like I say, it is a challenge but I really enjoy living like this. It makes me really appreciate what people did before me over the generations gone by. And I really feel like I'm being self-sufficient. I've got my fire on, I've got my little fan going to distribute the heat to the rest of the boat. I've got my little solar box that I can get power on the roof. 
I mean, yes, the sunlight has been a bit weak in winter, so I have just been plugging in whilst I charge my boat, but apart from that, I really can't complain. The next thing I'd like to do is you can get these water heaters from Decathlon and they fit around your flue and I think they can carry up to 20 litres of water. So if I want hot water I have to switch on my gas and that heats up 50 litres of water in a separate holding tank. However it takes a while to do, it takes up to like 40 minutes or an hour to heat up the water and it uses a lot of gas and as I'm trying really hard to be mindful of how much I spend on the water getting new gas bottles isn't really an option for me so with that in place if I had a water heater around there so I could have instant hot water for washing my dishes or I don't know washing my hair that would be really good I bought this boat to have a different level of living than what I did on Leviathan and I have found that even though it's much uh, bigger space and much more comfortable I've probably gone backwards in the sense that I'm, I'm doing all this stuff but the things that make life comfortable like switching on the gas whenever I want for a shower cooking on the hob having the fridge switched on all those are luxuries that I can't really do at the moment I'm trying very hard to make things last as long as I can because this year has been hard for everyone and spending a lot of money on improvements isn't really the position that I'm in but next year that is when some improvements would take place it's like I've got radiators on this boat I could switch on the gas and heat would flood the boat but it uses so much gas and I don't want to have to keep buying an expensive bottle for like oh, 60, 70 quid now. So if I can make do then I will. What's the saying? Take care of the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves. But this is what this experience was all about. To live a bit more rugged. It wasn't on purpose, but I do find myself feel like I'm slipping more and more into the 1920s being on this 1920s boat. As I was walking along the towpath, I had a giant bag of logs on my back, and I think I was bent in two, and I had my hood up, and it was dark. And a car stopped as I was walking over the bridge, and I don't know what they must have thought. I don't know if they thought like I was an old woman or, or a ghost, but they were very hesitant in there. Uh, driving past but I just thought as I had that weight on my back this is no different from what they did back then they would have done this they would have carried heavy loads they would have felt and looked like me pretty dirty <laughs> and I'm just really grateful I'm grateful that I've got that fortitude to not put up with this because they lived in, a, in such a small space in the back cabin, in the boat's cabin and I've got all of this lovely house space and I do have electricity I feel close that's good enough for me well about Two hours later, dinner is served. Not bad. All in all, I enjoy problem solving and despite the challenges that come my way, I'm definitely here for the journey.